In the many years that he has been my guide he has delivered score of lectures, both in public and private sittings. Some of them, particularly those having a scientific basis, have been too obtrusive for the comprehension of the average circle member, though great scientists, such as Sir Oliver Lodge, read many of them with respect and understanding. His philosophical teachings follow closely those of Jesus of Nazareth, whom he invariably calls the Nazarene. God, he tells us, is perfect mind, which is love, wisdom and power. God is not a being but a force of good which permeates the universe and is infinite. Evil is not a force, but an error in thought which has arisen in the world because of the misuse of free will. It is finite and can be overcome by concentration on good and on God. As God dwells within each one of us, every individual is part of the whole which is God. And because we are all part of the infinite spirit of God, we cannot die. The gradual unfolding of the consciousness of the mind of God within us is the process of evolution of our souls. In order to find God we must be born again into the realization that we are spiritual beings, and into the acceptance of our personal responsibility for every action we commit. Thus the extent of our evolution depends entirely upon ourselves. As we desire, so we shall receive. The universe is ordered by divine law. If we follow this law, it will lead to perfect harmony, if we go against it, the result is chaos. The first law is that of love. Love is the ability to see only latent perfection in our fellow men. Love is the attribute of the divine mind, whereas fear stems from the material mind. Love and fear are the two incompatible opposites, the one forever striving to cast out the other. Love is the complete negation of self, self-interest is the father of fear. The natural expression of love is service to others, not so much in the performance of great works as in doing that which lies nearest to hand. To dwell within the kingdom of heaven is to dwell within the mind of God which lies within ourselves. All must first seek this kingdom from which, once found, all else will flow. Prayer for ourselves is purposeless, for we already have all we can ever need. The only true prayer is the unceasing communion with the divine spirit within us. Never must we forget that God is within us, not outside us, that we are all individual parts of God, which is the whole.